Hi everybody! In this video, we will talk about Carothers theory, which is an important concept in the biomaterials class. So what is Carothers theory? So this theory was proposed by Wallace Carothers, who invented nylon in 1935. And Carothers theory basically provides the degree of polymerization, or the XN, for a given fractional monomer conversion in the step growth polymerization process. In other words, it's basically an analytical technique to figure out the average degree of polymerization for polymers that are constructed using step growth polymerization. Okay, so that was a lot of stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it step by step and kind of break it down. Okay, so before we get there, though, we're going to take a step back, pun intended, and we're going to talk about step growth polymerization. Okay, so step growth polymerization is one of the types of polymerization. The other one is chain growth polymerization. And in step growth polymerization, what you have is a random union of monomers, and each of those monomers needs two functional groups. Okay, um, and besides using monomers, you can also use large molecules, such as dimers and trimers. The other method, which we're not going to mention too much in this video, but I just wanted to kind of put it up there for your reference. The other method is uh, chain growth polymerization. And if you, you know, if you remember from what you've learned in the course, that's where you add the, the monomers at the end of the polymer chain, okay? And it involves these, you know, initiation, propagation, and termination steps. I guess if some of you guys, if you've taken organic chemistry, think of your free radical initiation. It's kind of like that. You add things at the end, okay? So going back to Carothers theory, up here, this is the general equation for Carothers theory, Okay. And this equation, you know, when you look at it, it looks kind of big and, you know, kind of scary, like, oh my God, where did all these terms come from, right? But we're going to, in the next few steps, we're going to break this equation down and we're going to derive it ourselves so, so we understand exactly how it works and what it means, okay? And one of the building blocks that kind of gets us there is this average degree of polymerization where we're going to divide the, in the initial number of molecules that we started with in the vessel, and then we're going to divide it with the N, which is the number of unreacted molecules that are remaining in the vessel after the reaction is complete. Okay, so we're going to solve this problem and that's what's going to help us kind of develop a better intuition um, for how step growth polymerization works as well as how Carothers theories, uh, you know, predicts some of the limitations. Okay, so we're going to do first a derivation and then we're going to explain how our derived equation can show us the limitations for step growth polymerization. Okay, so before we get there, we need to kind of have like a little bit of framework to kind of, you know, play with. We need some equations on our plate that we can mess around with, okay? And these are the three equations that are pretty critical. The first one you guys have already seen, I just talked about it, right? This is referring to the average degree of polymerization. You divide the number of initial molecules you started with, with the amount that's remaining in the vessel after the reaction is done, okay? Now these two equations you guys have not seen yet. So this one, the P is referring to the extent of the reaction. You can also think of it as the uh, conversion rate. And what, you, what that means is you're looking at how much of the species got consumed over what you started with, right? So this numerator talks about the amount of molecules that, are, that got consumed in the reaction, right? And then you divide it by the initial amount that you started with. So the reason there's a two in place is because the N naughts, they're referring to the molecules and P is referring to the amount of functional groups that basically got consumed. So we need to put a two in there to represent, you know, each monomer has the two functional groups, right? But technically, you know, if you think about it, it's like one is in the numerator, one's in the denominator. So technically speaking, we can cancel them out. So after we cancel them out and rearrange this equation, we're gonna end up with this, right? And that gives us the N, which is the number of unreacted molecules in the vessel after your reaction is done. And the way you get there is, you, you start with what, you, you know, the initial number of molecules that you had in the vessel that you put in, and then you subtract off the molecules that got consumed in the reaction. You subtract those two, and then you're going to get back the, the number of molecules that were unreacted, okay? And the last equation deals with the reaction ratio. So you're going to divide the number of Na with the Nb, and this Na and this Nb, they're, it basically refers to the functional groups, right? So there's a little bit of a difference here. Functional groups of A and this is the functional groups of B, right? Versus when we talked about N and N naught, these refer to molecules. So this is kind of the only thing that kind of gets a bit confusing. So just make sure if you talk about molecules, then you're not gonna have the two in front of it, right? But when you talk about your functional groups, then you will. 
Okay, but in this case, we just have a ratio, so we're not gonna put a two in front of it. All right, so first what we're gonna do is, we're gonna first figure out how many molecules were there initially. We don't wanna just say N naught, okay? We wanna kinda have an equation for N naught because in what our goal is, we wanna get to this equation, right? Xn equals this stuff over this stuff, right? But we also know that Xn equals N naught over N. So as you guys are probably getting this intuition, we are gonna divide N naught with N. So we need to come up with an equation for N naught we need to come up with an equation for n. We're gonna divide the two, so then we're gonna get xn, which is gonna look like this. Okay, so that's kind of what our game plan is. Okay, so to determine the number of molecules initially, we're gonna think about how we can talk about Na and Nb. Okay, so in terms of molecules, right? So we can say n naught, we know that's the number of molecules initially, right? If we were to express it in terms of Na and Nb, right? Right? But remember, Na and Nb is not number of molecules. It's the number of functional groups, right? So you need to divide it by two. And that's what gets us the Na and Nb. Now in this equation, there's like three terms in there, right? There's an N naught, there's an Na, and there's an Nb. We don't wanna write this equation like this. We wanna write it differently so that we only have two variables to worry about. So the way we do that is we go back and we think about this third equation, right? This R equals Na over Nb, and either Na or Nb, we will rep replace it with the other one, right? By rearranging this, this equation to solve for that. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say my Na equals Rnb, okay? So whenever I see Na, I'm not gonna write Na, I'm gonna write Rnb, just so that everything's in terms of Nb. Okay, and this just makes it easier to solve the problem. Okay, so this one I'm gonna rearrange and uh, rewrite so I'm gonna say RNB plus NB over two, right? That makes sense. And then notice there's an NB on both, you know, both of these terms. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna factor it out. So the first guy has an R in front of it and the second guy has a one in front of it. So that's my expression for N naught that I'm gonna plug in at the end, okay? Now the next step is we're gonna figure out the extent of the reaction because Remember, it, the, ex, the expression is Xn equals N naught over N, right? So N is the number of unreacted molecules, right? So what we wanna do is we wanna figure out the number of unreacted A and the number of unreacted B, okay? And then we're gonna figure out how we're gonna put them together in this equation for the N. And then we're gonna put, plug the N in here for this equation for Xn. All right, so that was a lot of you know going on, so we're gonna take it step by step. So first, let's figure out the number of unreacted A. Okay, so, you know, the starting point for A is this functional groups of A. So right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with functional groups, okay? So we're gonna say unreacted A and unreacted B in terms of functional groups, but when we go to plug it in for our Xn equation, we're gonna make sure we convert it into molecules by dividing by two. Okay, so that just makes it kind of easier to work with. Okay, so our unreacted A, well, Na is what we start with, but how much did we consume? Well, if you think about it, we consumed P and A amount, right? P is the extent of the reaction and NA is just what we started with. So this is the amount that got consumed. This is what you started with. When you subtracted, you get unreacted A, right? That makes sense. Okay, the other thing is we also have the unreacted B. So a similar thing, you have, I'm trying to make sure I keep my notation consistent. I have my NB and then what do I subtract off? Now I can say P and B, that's fine, but Again, I wanna keep it in terms of, so, you know, the amount of A that got reacted is the amount of B and B, I mean, excuse me, P and B that got reacted, right? So it's much more convenient for me to just say it this way, NB minus P and A, because I know exactly how much NA was, so I, I don't wanna get myself confused accidentally, right? So, because, you know, you have a molecule of A, you have a molecule of B, the way they get consumed is the A gets consumed or the B gets consumed is they react with each other, right? That's how, and it's the same amount that got consumed, right? So this is my expression for NB, uh, excuse me, unreacted B. Okay, but remember what we just said. We're gonna say whenever we see NA, we're not gonna say NA. We're gonna say NB, RNB, sorry, right? Whenever we see NA, we're gonna say RNB. 
just to make sure everything's in terms of one uh, variable. Okay, so we're gonna rewrite this guy. Okay, so unreacted A, so I'm just gonna say un A, that you know means shorthand for unreacted A. And we're gonna say R and B minus P times R and B, right? So the only thing I did was whenever I saw N A, I just replaced it with R and B. And here we already had the P in front of it, so I kept the P and then again, N A is R and B, okay? And if we factor R and B out, we get one minus R, R and B times one minus R. So that's the representation for unreacted A. We're gonna do a similar thing for unreacted B. And that is equals to NB, we will leave that the same. And then we had P and A, right? So we had P and NA was R and B. So now everything's in terms of NB, right? And then we're gonna factor out just the NB in this case. And we're gonna get one minus PR. Okay, so that makes sense, right? We, but we just wanna make sure this is actually unreacted functional groups, right? So just to make sure we don't get confused. Okay, that's the extent of the reaction. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out how do we combine these R, uh, this unreacted functional groups of A with unreacted functional groups of B to figure out what the N is, right? So that's our total unreacted molecules, our N. So notice it says unreacted molecules, right? So what we're gonna do essentially is we're gonna do A plus B, right? These are the unreacted A and B, and we're gonna divide it by two to get the molecules. Because each of those is a functional group, is a functional group, we care about the molecule. So we're just gonna add them together and divide by two to get our N, which is the total number of unreacted molecules. Okay, so let's do that. So we're gonna plug in what we got for A, which was R and B times one minus P. Okay. And we got that up here. And then we're gonna add NB times one minus PR. And that's what we got for unreacted B. Right here. So far so good, makes sense? Okay. So now we see that there is an NB term here and there's an NB term here, right? So we're gonna factor that out. Okay, but also notice that this is an R in front of here. So first what we're gonna just do is we're just gonna expand this one so you only have an NB in front of it and then we'll add the two terms from here. Okay, so we're gonna have NB times R minus P, oh, excuse me, it's R minus PR because the R goes here as well, plus NB times one minus PR, still over two. And now we can just add these guys together, right? So we have NB over two. So we have R <coughs> minus PR plus one minus PR. And that finally gives us NB times one plus R minus two PR. And that's our final expression for N. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in this N as well as the N naught into that equation, Xn equals N naught over N. And that's what's gonna give us that general equation that looked so big and messy in the beginning. We had no idea how to get it. Now we figured out how to, how to actually get it, okay? So Xn equals N naught over N. Okay, R plus one over RP. Okay, now notice that there's an NB over two at the top and at the bottom, so that cancels. And then we're left with one plus R over one plus R minus two RP. And that's our expression for Xn. And this is the general characters theory equation. Oops. 
Okay. So now we have the equation on hand, right? So now what we're going to do Now what we're going to do is we're going to figure out the limitations. Okay? So the first limitation deals with how the extent of reaction determines the molecule uh, the molecular weight of the polymer, right? So depending on how much the reaction went towards completion, that's what's going to determine how big your polymer is, right? So we're going to do an, uh, an example. We're going to do a scenario where we have Xn equals 1 minus 0.98. Okay, so we're saying the P is 98%. We just plugged it in. And interestingly, we end up getting 1 over 0.02, which is actually 50. Right? If you think about it, 50 is not that big for a size of a polymer. It's pretty small, actually. Right? And that's assuming if your reaction is 98%. And that's also pretty difficult to achieve. And also, just wanted to mention, we assume that R is 1. Here. Okay. So basically, you need an almost you know, complete reaction rate to be able to get a polymer that's even size 50. That's pretty, you know, that's pretty, you know, the size is small and that's really hard to achieve. So that tells you that, you know, the polymers that result from step growth polymerization, they're going to be pretty small. And the second thing is that you need to maintain a very good ratio of your reactive groups, right? Remember we mentioned that R is equals to NA over NB, right? You need to make sure this ratio is close to one. That's also pretty difficult to achieve. And actually, if you do an example, an analysis, what if R was 90? Right. So let's say R was 90, meaning you have like, let's say nine, you know, functional groups of A and you have 10 of them for B, for example. Right. R is 0.9. And when we plug it in, we end up getting right in this equation. So we have one plus 0.9, which is that gives us 1.9. And we also get this 1.9 again from the denominator of 1 point, uh, excuse me, 1 plus R, that gives us 1.9. And then when we do the subtraction, 2, and we're assuming in this case that we're getting a perfect P, right? So 2 times 1 times uh, 0 0.9, right? And that basically gets us 1.9 over 1.9 minus 1.8. That gets us 19. That's also pretty surprising, actually, right? I mean, even if you if your reaction was to go towards completion, right? We assume P is one here, and if your R was just off by a little bit, just by 0.9, then you're gonna get a 19 as the size of your polymer, and that's a pretty that's pretty small. Again, it's even worse than what we had before, where we said the size is gonna be 50. Now we're getting 19, right? So the size is really small. So these are the two major limitations. You need to make sure you have a very good stoichiometric ratio to make sure the reaction you know, gives a polymer size that's pretty good. And the other thing is you need to make sure your reaction goes as much as it can towards completion. But even if it's like 98%, then you're still gonna get 50. And 98% is already hard to achieve by itself anyway. And it, I mean, even if you were to achieve it, then you get a size of 50. So these are the two major limitations. And I hope you guys uh, found this video helpful. Thanks.